Hello, I'm going to be talking about the Jubilee celebrations, the Queen's walking stick, royal underwear, and the fact that I might miss a couple of videos because of all the stuff that's going on round here. Uh, this video itself is probably going to end up going out quite late. That's because of all the Jubilee events going on and, and, and other things too. Now, there are two things I have to say before I start. And the, the first is that if I do miss a video, uh, it's because I'm out having fun. Sorry about that. I'm not leaving you. I have just got plenty of activities to deal with right now. And the second thing is that if you want to give me a one time donation, normally uh, PayPal was the only way to do it. But I did ask Subscribestar about five months ago why their single donation um, system wasn't working. And I just got a message from them um, yesterday to say it's working now. So if you want to buy me a coffee, then you can do that on Subscribestar as, uh, as you can on PayPal. And that's my email address, which is in the description anyway. Okay, now the Queen's walking stick. Well, I'm going to read you this article here about it. Well, uh, part of it, I'm going to zip through it. This is the Queen uh, with her walking stick or somebody with a walking stick anyway. And it says here that it was a gift from the army. And here's a picture of her with, with Charles and you know, Catherine. Yep, they are, and, and one kid. <laughs> and the legend on the silver band around the top of the walking stick is the, the army presents its loyal support, the sovereign, platinum jubilee, um, 1,952 to, oh yeah, 2,022. Okay, so the Queen was said to have loved it. Right, okay, oh yeah, and here's a picture of the, the at least the top of the walking stick. Now, Dennis Wall uh, made that stick and he, he submitted uh, a few of them and she chose that one. It's mottled hazel, apparently. I've never seen that before, but it looks quite pretty. And he, he no, Mr. Wall put in three sticks. She chose that one, but she asked for a couple of um, modifications. And one of them was to make the stick an inch shorter. Well, yes, yeah, she wasn't very tall to start off with, and she's certainly not grown since then. And the other thing was to remove the standard ferrule, which is at the bottom of the stick, you know, that metal thing that protects the end of the stick, and substitute a horn one for it to match the, the handle. So um, why? Well, this is an interesting illustration. The first is a metal ferrule would make more of a noise. And she spends a lot of time, you know, going in echoing churches on tiled floors and you'd hear that click, click, click. And she didn't want that. It's an intrusive sound. So she asked for horn, which would make a lot less noise, although it would wear out, of course, uh, fairly, well, relatively quickly, whereas um, metal would stay as long as the stick. So uh, why, why so? I mean, obviously she didn't want to make the noise, but then somebody might say, well, why didn't she just have no ferrule at, at the end at all, just the wood? Well, that would ruin the stick. You know, it would wear down very quickly and you could say, well, you know, she could order 20 of them. She could order 40 of them. She's one of the richest people in the world. Why doesn't she? And that's why uh, I, I wanted to talk about it because it illustrates the sort of thrifty habits, believe it or not, that the royal family has. They, uh, uh, that ferrule can be replaced and saving the rest of the stick. Whereas with no protection at all, you just got to keep on buying new sticks. So um, it's, uh, that's a, a ram's horn on the top. What else is there to say? No, nothing else. I shall now illustrate the royal family's, an illustration of the royal family's thrift that I heard about. So I have a friend who had a friend who used to work in Rigby and Pella. Rigby and Pella is a, um, is a lingerie shop just round the corner from Harrods. 
and it's very, very posh. I've been there to buy underwear before and um, uh, it's uh, when I went there, I was the door was opened for me by a uniformed concierge. That's how posh it was. Uh, and you, you go in there, you either ring them up and make an appointment or they give you a ticket. You go and sit in a nice little chair and you wait for an assistant to come. And when the assistant comes, uh, she will say to you, well, what do you what are you here for? And you can say, oh, I want some slips or a. Um, you know, a pair of pyjamas or a bra. In my case, I went to buy a bra and uh, uh, and they, they do this. Oh, she said, uh, yeah, an ordinary day bra? And I said, yes. And then she went away and she came back with four bras. My exact size, my exact size. She hadn't taken any measurements. And we went in, well, I didn't know that at the time, but we went into this cubicle and then she, she handed me the bras and I tried them on and they fit every single one of them, perfect fit. Boy, are those women well-trained. I, I, I mean, it's so impressive. If you go to London, make a visit to Rigby and Pella, it's better than going to, uh, you know, to our galleries. Well, no, I, I can't say that. All right, so that's Rigby and Pella. Now, uh, they have the Royal Warrant, or they, they had the Royal Warrant. The Royal Warrant means you can leave, uh, you can put a, um, a coat of arms on your notepaper and over the door. And that means that the Royal Family in some way patronises your uh, your business. Well, they had that until 2018 when the woman, now I have this down here, the woman who used to be the director of Rigby and Pella, she wrote uh, what sounds like a very amusing book called Storm in a Decup about her, her years working for Rigby and Pella, but she mentioned somewhere in the book that she went to Buck House a few times to uh, take underwear of various sorts to the royal family. And a royal warrant was withdrawn at once. You, you, can, you can show you have a royal warrant, which means you have uh, you do business with uh, the royal family, that they patronise you, but you cannot talk about the contact you make with any member of the royal family. She broke the rules. She's, she's very, very regretful of that. She didn't realise uh, how indiscreet that was. But anyway, yeah, I, uh, the royal family, when they have, they have breakfast cereal and it's brought to them in plastic containers so that they don't know who's manufactured it. So that nobody can say, well, they'll eat I don't know what, Kellogg's rather than uh, whichever other company it is. Um, it's, uh, there are a lot of uh, um, rules and regulations around that. But anyway, Rigby and Pella, posh lingerie provider to royalty. This friend of a friend who used to work there said they regularly got underwear from the Queen and uh, other members of the royal family for repair. That's how thrifty they are. I, I, was, I was absolutely astonished when I heard that. But yes, they don't throw things away. The Queen uh, was, uh, I mean, she wears different outfits. She, she very rarely wears the same outfit, outfit twice. And that's because, of course, uh, she can't be seen to be uh, offending various people by re-wearing clothes. She, she has to be specially dressed for them. But when... Uh, when she's, uh, the, I have known that they have worn the the same outfit on a couple of occasions, but very widely spaced. And then when they reckon it's been used enough, either once or three or four times, whatever it is, they take all the labels off, every possible means of identifying it, and then it's given to various charities. Okay, so that's, uh, hang on a minute, I wonder if I've just... Am I still recording? Yeah, okay. I thought I'd uh, hit, hit a button or something. All right, so that's the thriftiness of the royal family. Now, that sort of thing isn't reported in the papers and people don't make a big fuss of it, but somehow the, the people know 
that it, the, there's something about the royal family as elevated as they are there's a sort of genuineness about their connection with the British people and, and that was one uh, striking difference when uh, Meghan and Harry was still in, 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 in the UK and they had to attend some sort of charity event and apparently Meghan wanted to leave after she'd been there after now she was getting bored and Harry said no no you've got to stay and Meghan said to him something like but everybody's seen us we've turned up we can go now she didn't understand why they were there she thought it was just to be seen that uh, and that's the difference between the genuine and the the, the, the surface, uh, what, what appears on the surface. Now, um, it's because of that feeling that people have about the royal family that, well, look, I'm going to show you some photos of the mall before uh, the Jubilee uh, celebrations got kicked off. Just look at all of that. And then during the the part of the uh, the start of the celebrations you know when the Coldstream guards and all the others were marching up the mall and people were pushed to one side so that the bands could come through and all the rest of it a group of brainless witless idiots went out there and sat in the path of the bands i don't know what they thought they'd do i mean if they actually if, if one because these guys were playing musical instruments if they'd fallen over one of these guys i suppose uh the demonstrators would have thought that they would scored some sort of a point but anyway the police went out there if you notice no batons no boots they just lifted them up and, and shunted them away I, I wish they'd have done that for the extinction rebellion thing uh, a little while ago but anyway on this occasion they really got to work and the people who were watching were booing these demonstrators they were really angry with them for for being intrusive in that way now i'm contrasting the upsurge of uh, of affection and uh participation people had with that celebration with putin's victory day parade in in moscow yeah i'm, I'm going to put that out there. where are the people where are the people uh, i uh, i remember there was another a uh, video I saw, which was somebody obviously born in England, but he's living in Russia and he's on Russia's side. He uh, he puts out videos sympathetic to the Russian position in the Ukraine war, for instance. I, I, I think that was the same guy. Anyway, he was watching a Victory Day parade, whether it was in Moscow or in another town uh, where they were having another parade. But whatever it was, there was a river and the people were watching it from the other side of the river. All the soldiers were going past on the other side. There was no connection. When you think of all the people who just stood outside in the mall for hours just to see the Queen wave at them and you think how the crowds are not there at the Victory Day Parade. And, and when you contrast the, the bands and the colour and the, 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 the general friendliness of what was going on in the mall, as opposed to the Victory Day Parade, okay, it, it was uh, supposed to be a military victory, but even so, just machines of war and death and marching soldiers. It was grim, it was harsh. There was no love there, just a an expression of uh, a, an exhibition of naked power. So you contrast that with what was going on in the mall and, and you think of, of the attitude of the rulers and, and the, the connection of the rulers of the people. And I'm sorry to say here, I'm going to throw some cold water on my American viewers. But yes, this too. A country, a government that seems to have lost the affection of its people does that. And, uh, well, yeah, so you can then say to me, oh, Demi, you're so smug and self-satisfied. Well, yes, there has to be a time for that too, hasn't there? Britain, with all its faults, 
can still celebrate the good. And there is plenty of good. We have problems. We don't do things that well. Sometimes we get annoyed with our government. I believe people were booing Boris Johnson when he went into the um, uh, service of Thanksgiving. Uh, but still, they can boo him uh, without getting arrested, can't they? And, uh, and so, yes, I can celebrate this. I do celebrate it. I do think that, that those crowds on the mall, they actually say something. And you guys, wherever you are in the world, you can celebrate it too, because as long as there are com countries like Britain, which still has some sort of a functioning and uh, uh, generally a, uh, a government that people are generally confident in. I know, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, that's something to celebrate. That is something to celebrate. And also, we can remember how fragile all of this is. I, I mean, Ukraine was a thriving cosmopolitan European country until three months ago. Right now, a very great deal of it is, is simply bombed out wasteland. And half, half, I don't know how much of its population is in Poland and Romania and um, Hungary and, and Britain and wherever. So, we really should, if we can't celebrate what's happening in Britain now, then when, you know, what can we celebrate? Yeah. Anyway, as I said, uh, my presence on the internet might be a bit erratic over the next few days. Uh, so, uh, yeah, please, uh, please don't take that too badly. And um, remember, please like, share, subscribe just keep your subscription going uh, uh, remember i upload videos on at granny opterix on twitter gab and parlor so you'll if you subscribe to one of those you'll always get notifications oh and i thought yes of course i'm on youtube rumble and bit shoot i forgot to say that well never mind okay well happy holidays everyone wherever you are and see you next time why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.